What is going on everybody? It's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this morning's video, I just wanted to talk about what the futures are looking like in terms of the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, and the NASDAQ, and kind of what's going through my mind right now. What are my plans and some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching for today? So if you enjoyed this video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button, drop that comment, let me know what you guys think, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already ready and you enjoy the content and let's get right into it. So the slash ES right here, this is the E-mini S&P 500 index futures. And the futures right now, as you can see, they're currently up $9.50, up 0.34% for the S&P 500. And we talked about in yesterday's video how today could potentially be a bounce back day. And today seems like from what the futures are telling us that it is going to be a bounce back day. And let me explain Explain why I was saying that in yesterday's video and kind of see how that pattern is playing out as of right now. So let's hop over here to the 20 day one hour chart and let me explain what I what I was talking about pretty much in yesterday's video. So we notice how obviously the S&P 500, the ES right here, it's been making lower lows, lower highs, right? It's been on a downtrend over the past roughly month at this point. And we notice how every time that it's pushed to a low, it's rebounded for either a day or a couple of days in a row, right? Take a look here. The low followed by a rebound, the low followed by a rebound. And in this particular time period, in the middle of May, about two weeks ago, we had a low followed by a couple of days of rebounding, right? Every single time, literally, we've had a rebound. And what happened yesterday? Well, yesterday, we ended up pushing to another low. We had about two, three um, pretty bad red days in terms of the market. We pushed a 27.66 in terms of the ES here, and that was a lower low from the previous. As you guys can see here on the 20-day, one-hour chart, it is the low on this chart. And now we're starting to see that bounce back. So, you know, over the past 20 days, we noticed how both of the SMAs are resistance levels. So at this point, you know, with this $9.50 uh, green future that I'm seeing here, I'm thinking either two things can happen, right? If we end up breaking this 50 SMA, we may be running up to the 180 SMA resistance here, and that could last over the span of two days, right? If we break that level, you know, I'm personally thinking we may be running up another 20, 30 points in the S&P 500, just simply because we've been getting slaughtered. You know, the RSI on the larger term charts, you know, it's very, very oversold, and it may be time for a bit of a run-up. And if we're looking on the 184 hour, you know, we're seeing a lot of the same. We're noticing the big gap that's between the candlesticks right now and the 50 SMA that could potentially be filled because we notice how the uh, 50 SMA is of resistance here on the 184 hour chart as well. So that's what I'm honestly watching. So a potential gap fill here, I think is very, very viable. I think it can definitely happen, but let's say we slowly start to get rejected on this 20 day chart and we slowly start to push back, you know, this could be a little premature rejection to another lower low. And this is just what I'm watching, guys, honestly, heading into the market open. I want to see how the S&P 500 is going to be reacting. Are we going to pop up another 10 points at the market open? You know, the first 30 minutes to an hour, maybe two hours in the market. Is the market going to continue to trend up? Or are we going to have one of those days where we gap up, kind of see some weakness, some resistance? Distance and then slowly start to fall and then start to push down again. But as of now, the futures are green and we have a pretty good amount of room to run here up to that 50 SMA on the 184 hour chart. So judging on the YM here, this is the mini Dow Jones industrial uh, future. This one's up about 0.17% right now, up 44 points, not as up as the S&P, but it's still green nonetheless. And just like the S&P, we're noticing here on the 184 hour chart, the big sell off to the lower low that we experienced 
experienced over the past couple of days and the consolidation and the attempt to fight and rebound back up to that 50 SMA resistance that we were at just a couple of days ago here for the Dow Jones. So the pattern's very similar, guys. You know, judging on this 20-day, uh, one-hour chart, a lot of the same, right? Lower lows, lower highs. Every time, pretty much, we've pushed to a low, a lower low, we've rebounded. Take a look. Lower low, rebound, 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 rebound for a couple of days here. We pushed down, rebounded for a couple of days. Now we push down aggressively. Is this the time period where we rebound for a couple of days? It very well could be, guys, and that is what I am watching. In particular, this 50 SMA on the 20-day, one-hour chart. If we break that, you know, we may be heading up to that 180 SMA and we could be running potentially for the rest of this week. And also, again, on the 184 hour chart, you know, there is a quite uh, quite a gap to fill here up to that 50 simple moving average. So NQ, the NASDAQ futures, they're up around the same percentage wise in terms of uh, the S&P 500 pretty similar there it's up about almost 30 points right now up 0.4 percent seems like the Nasdaq is holding that 20 or 7200 rather level of support which was an old resistance from back in the beginning of March back in the uh, excuse me back in the beginning of November in 2018 as well but the pattern is still descending here, lower lows, lower highs, moving averages, they're acting as resistance levels, but we're noticing just like the Dow and the S&P, every time we've pushed to a low, lower low, we've rebounded. So keep an eye here, lower low, rebound, lower low. Is this the potential rebound maybe back up to the 50 SMA for us to fill the gap? I think it is very, very possible. And judging on the 20-day, one-hour chart, we are right at that level of the 50 SMA resistance. Just keep an eye on the potential breakout from there. If we break out of that, we may be running up to that 180 SMA or retesting the $7,300 level of resistance um, you know, on this 20-day, one-hour chart. So what am I watching today in terms of my personal watch list? Well, it's a lot of the same, guys. You know that I trade market ETFs when the markets are volatile and downtrending like this. I'm not really focusing on large cap stocks, maybe some put options here and there, but I mostly find uh, the most potential for me and my style of trading to trade these leveraged ETFs that trade on the market. Markets, some that trade on crude oil, you know, gold, natural gas. These that I, these are the ones that I talk about a lot on this channel. So, you know, the first one that I'm watching today is going to be TQQQ, right? This is a 3x leveraged ETF that goes up in price when the Nasdaq 100 is going up in price. So, this is in the situation, the scenario. If you know the markets do end up running for today and tomorrow, TQQQ will have a lot of gas in the tank at that point, and it may run four, five, six percent over the next couple of days. So this is one in terms of, hey, if the markets go up, this can be a very good play. And if we're looking at how it's trending pre-market here, you guys can see, you know, it's trending up pre-market, you know, it's riding up uh, the 180 SMAs support. We're seeing the bullish cross 50 above the 180 in terms of the SMAs here. Everything is looking pretty solid. So if this continues, guys, the market push continues um, in the beginning of the day today this is what I'm going to be hopping in for for trade but let's say we get that premature rejection like I was saying for the S&P the Nasdaq the Dow let's say we get some bad news let's say we just drop let's say we just start selling off again SQQQ is the inverse to TQQQ which is what I'm going to be trading which goes up whenever the Nasdaq 100 is selling off at a 3x rate so for those of you guys that don't know what that means this is a leverage GTF. It's a 3x leverage GTF, and it simply just moves three times the direction of the NASDAQ. So let's say the NASDAQ's down 1%, SQQQ will be up 3%, right? That's pretty much how it works. So that is what I'm watching. These two in particular, 
Two ones that I talked about in yesterday's video, one of them being McDonald's and the other one being Coca-Cola. These are also two value stocks that I'm personally watching as a potential dip buy, as a potential trade. We saw the pullback from McDonald's, $200 down to about $195. We're holding that uh, $180 SMA here on the 184-hour chart. That's looking pretty good. I want to see if we're going to hold that level and slowly test back up to $197. That's personally what I'm waiting for for McDonald's. Coca-Cola not looking too great, uh, or actually it's looking decent, but not as good as McDonald's here on a technical basis. But just like McDonald's, you know, we got the pullback from 50 down to about 48.50. So that dollar and 50 cents of margin was opened. So now ideally guys for Coca-Cola, you know, if we do end up holding this little higher low here from, uh, you know, the previous, this could be a spot where we potentially test back up to the $49 level of resistance, but let's say we sell off even further. The point where I'm looking to see if Coke holds above is going to be this 180 SMA here, maybe at about $48. So if it does sell off another 75 cents, you know, this could be an even juicier entry price for Coca-Cola at about $48 for a potential swing trade. And looking at how it's performing right now, you know, it's up a bit pre-market hours, right? And you can notice that by this price right here, 48.72, it's up about 11 cents here pre-market hours. So let's just take a look at some large cap stocks very quickly. You know, you see Apple trending up here as the markets are recovering today. You know, let's see, Google. Google's most likely trending up as well. Yeah, it's trending up today. We're seeing gold making a push up into the 1280s. Kind of a big run on gold today. So I'm keeping an eye on JNUG, which goes up whenever gold goes up in price. We're seeing the nice little staircase pattern here. Higher highs, higher lows forming on gold. This could be a potential recovery. Looking for a break out of 1290 that would be the continuation of the uptrend especially if it hits a higher low at that point jnug could do very well in that situation you know let's take a look at labd labu very quickly these are two biotech etfs that i personally trade i'm assuming labd's down right now yeah that makes sense because the markets are up you know typically labd it follows the sps ibi index this index when it sells off you know, LABD is selling off as well because it follows the same trend. But when LABU is going up, right, the inverse to LABD, SPS IBI is going up in price. So let's say the markets run today, SPS IBI maybe, uh, you know, tests that moving average, uh, the 50 SMA, maybe it starts to pop up a bit, or even if it breaks out of that 50 SMA uh, moving average here, you know, that could be a bullish play on LABU. So all in all, guys, today, I'm just watching, as usual, the market ETF, TVIX as well, maybe a potential play in one of these, you know, biotech ETFs, LABU, LABD, potential play in McDonald's, Coca-Cola, you know, we're seeing Tesla, you know, continuing to fall. Maybe if we get a better uh, price and the options look better in terms of price because they are quite expensive right now, I may take a put option position in Tesla, but I'm just being simply patient with Tesla at this point, guys. I'm not too sure what I'm going to be doing, right? The stock has just been getting brutally beaten down. Who knows? It might be. It may be due for a reversal soon, but in my opinion, I don't think it's going to reverse unless they report some stellar earnings in the next earnings report let's say somehow Elon and Tesla end up blowing away the production numbers let's say they actually pull a profit or something that in my opinion is what's needed at this point for Tesla to rebound because the markets the analysts you guys see CNBC you guys see all of these different uh, news outlets media outlets they hate Tesla let's be honest they're putting such a negative light on Tesla the public is just has a negative light on Tesla you know Tesla keeps selling off so that's why I'm saying we need a 
an earnings report. We need a profit. Who knows if they're going to pull a profit this upcoming quarter. And we need to see some impressive numbers regarding sales, you know, Model 3 vehicles and all of that jazz. So that's kind of it for this morning's video, guys. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to go down below and hit that like button again. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. If you're new to the channel and you enjoy this type of content, I upload this kind of stuff every single day. So feel free to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I do make a video. Also, let me know what you guys thought about all this stuff. Drop a comment. I'll catch you all in the next video. Good luck today. Market opens in about four minutes. Let's get it, guys. I hope you all kill it. I'll see you all later.